Today, we're going to answer one of your questions about what price it makes sense to pay for a business given the risks involved in a business overstaying in a job. I'm David C. Barnett, and you're tuned in to Small Business and Deal Making, the podcast, YouTube channel, and blog where I talk about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium sized businesses while controlling risk. So if you're looking to take control of your future through buying a business one day, or if you already own a business and you're looking to grow or exit, you've come to the right place. I talk about interesting things, I talk to interesting people, and I answer your questions every week right here. So be sure to hit like and be sure to hit subscribe, and let's get to it. Are you thinking of growing your business or beginning a journey into entrepreneurship? Take a shortcut to success by buying an existing and profitable business the right way. Visit businessbuyeradvantage.com and learn more about my online training, group coaching, and consulting services designed to help you win. All right. Well, first of all, what are we going to be talking about today? I've got a question here uh, from a subscriber to my email list. And uh, let, me read the, let me read the question that uh, was submitted. Hi, David. I'm surprised on a mass email list I can reply to you. Well, that's because you don't know how many people it goes out to. It's a, it's a very select audience of people, of course, that subscribe to the list. I love your content that you put out. I've watched many of your YouTube videos by now. Thank you. You already talked me out of rushing into buying a business. To my question, what multiple of SDE should there be to take the risk of buying a business over being a W-2 employee, where the biggest risk is losing your job? assume an owner with decent relevant experience. And this, of course, is someone who subscribes to my email list, which you can find over at davidcbarnettlist.com. Um, so great question. So so let's tackle this because the, the question of multiples and pricing in the world of small business is one that, that pops up all the time. A lot of people are talking about this constantly. And let me just let me just give you an example, actually. Um, if I head over here, I've actually uh, gotten this tweet. So this is from SMB Attorney. Hey, Eric, shout out to you. Um, and this is a tweet that uh, is from uh, September the 11th. And it says, SMB acquisition multiples are averaging 3.2 times to 4x right now, down from 5x about 12 months ago. And he puts that this is anecdotal. So you'll see a lot of people out there talking about you know multiples and what a multiple you should pay and if you listen to podcasts you'll hear people throwing numbers around and what is really really important for everybody is to understand what is the context of the the size of business and what is being multiplied so we're just in time actually for a, a, a great piece of information that comes out every quarter, which is the IBBA Market Pulse Report. So let's take a look at the Market Pulse Report. I'm going to hit Control Two here, whoops, and uh, make this wider. I think I'm going to do it. Oh, there we go. So we're going to scroll through this report because there's a few things that I want to point out to you. And, and this, of course, is based upon members of the IBBA who are, um, you know, a, a select group of business brokers that that believe highly in their training and education. So they're a member of the IBBA and they they go and they they meet together and they do training together, et cetera. And the first thing I want to point out is the IBBA segmentation of the small business market. And so they call Main Street. Uh, they actually have sort of three categories here under half a million in SDE, 500K to 1 million in SDE, and 1 million to 2 million in SDE. There's the three brackets of their main street segments. And then uh, lower middle market, they say 2 million to 5 million, and then 5 million to 50 million are, uh, are the, the, the cash flow brackets. And these are EBITDA, okay? So it's important because whenever we're talking about pricing in the world of small businesses, you need to understand what the speaker is talking about because everyone's got different definitions of how they break these things down, okay? And so let's keep scrolling through here. There's all kinds of stuff about AI and, and everything. Um, of, of note, you know, this talks about how the lending environment uh, remains a challenge. And you can see here the uh, sort of silver bars 
talks about brokers' opinions about whether it's getting harder for people to get financing to do deals. And you can see in every category, um, you've got these, uh, um, the gold, the silver bar is, is growing. So people are finding it harder and harder to get financing. And then we have this, this other section here, dip in market confidence. So this is polling um, whether the sellers are confident or not. And you can see here the different um, categories. So under half a million of cash flow of SDE, that aligns with this bottom bar here. And this huge drop down to 13%, this would align with Q2 of 2020, which was the heart of the, the lockdown period. And then things rebounded into 21, and now they're starting to edge back down. So, so definitely 2021 was sort of a, a peak time where everyone saw that the economy was rebounding. Interest rates were really low. Um, people who had been planning on buying a business maybe in 2020 and sidelined themselves jumped back into the market. There was a lot of interest from, from buyers. And so, but we're seeing that from that point, things are starting to wane a little bit here. And the next thing I want to talk to you about is business values. Okay. So let me take a quick look over here, though, because to get back to our original question, what multiple of SDE should there be to take the risk of buying a business over being a W-2 employee where the biggest risk is losing your job? Assume an owner with a decent relevant experience. Okay. So so let's let's talk about that because... I want to make sure that we're looking at the right size of businesses. So if I pop back over here, I did a little bit of research. And this is from um, the DQYDJ. And it, you know, it looked official. So I used it. And it says individual income benchmarks by age in 2022. And so it looks like it's based on government data of some kind. But if we look at the average business buyer, in my experience with the people that I work with, is, um, is usually a middle-aged person. So we're going to use 45. And given that they are, according to the question, they're going to be an educated, qualified, competent kind of person. I'm going to say, what if they're in the top 75% of income earners? That would put them around $100,000 of salary. Okay. So... We're, we're talking about somebody who has a, a W-2 income or, or a paid job of about $100,000 a year. So if this person was going to compare the risk of being employed with the risk of owning a business, you know, what kind of, what kind of cash flow would they be shopping for? Well, if they need to take $100,000 out to replace their, their paycheck from work, they're also going to need money for taxes on the business's earnings, CapEx, uh, servicing debt, and then you're going to want a little bit of wiggle room. So, so this person is probably going to be shopping for a business with an SDE of at least two hundred thousand dollars, I would guess, right? So, so let's go back over to that IBBA report. So, business valuations. We're looking at multiples. They've got two different charts here. They've got um, the last three quarters for the median multiples, and they've got the um, year over year. And so this is going back Q2 in each of the last five years. And so you can see, since we're looking at the under $500,000 of, uh, under $500,000 of SDE over the last three quarters, this has remained pretty much stuck at two X. And if we look at the year over year going back five years in 2021, uh, where we saw that huge swing upward in seller confidence, the Main Street space under half a million of SDE actually saw a jump up to 3.3. Now, let's get back over to that tweet from Eric. Um, because what does Eric say? He says, SMB acquisition multiples are averaging 3.2 to 4 right now, down from 5 12 months ago. So let's go look at the chart here. So where were they at five times 12 months ago? Well, like they're here. So, so what I'm pointing out is that it would seem that the size of businesses that are being referred to are the bigger ones, you know, with 
five million dollars of of cash flow, or at least in the two to five million range. So so again, what I'm trying to point out is that what uh, what the tweet said is accurate. It's just that it was referring to EBITDA, and it was referring to these lower middle market businesses, not the main street. And, and why why is this important? Because if you're filling your feed with conversations about buying and selling small businesses and you see tweets like that, that refer to things like a 4X multiple, and you're looking at a business that's under half a million in, in SDE, and you applied that larger multiple to your deal, you would end up overpaying. What I'd like to point out to you is that in every quarter, in, in every one of these quartiles, except for 2021, in that under half a million SDE category, we're pretty much at the two times mark in Q2 of 2020. That was exceptional. Of course, that was the lockdown period. But in the last three quarters, we've also been at this 2X in this, in this space. So this is significant because over the course of time, for as long as I've been in this industry, for as long as I can remember, Everyone has always said that the average sort of value of these small Main Street businesses is about like 2.3 or 2.4 times SDE is, is the most common thing that you'll hear people say. Uh, and this varies, of course, by industry. So if it's a more capital intensive industry, um, if there's recurring contracted revenue, et cetera, these are reasons for people to pay more. If it's more of a service-based industry that doesn't have a lot of capital investment where there are very few barriers to entry, then this is a reason for people to pay less, you know, 1.7, 1.8. So the market is, is telling us what these businesses are worth. Let's get, let's get back to the original question. So the original question was, what multiple of SDE should there be to take the risk of buying a business over being a W-2 employee where the biggest risk is losing your job? So I don't think that I am wise enough or smart enough to be able to say, this is the price you need to pay in order to balance this risk question. But I think that there's tremendous wisdom in the crowd. And what we observe when we look at reports like this IBBA report is we're looking at the actual results of the negotiations from all those buyers and sellers that are out there in the market. And if we assume that buyers are acting in a self-interested fashion, then we can assume that buyers are not necessarily doing deals that work against their own best interests. And in this business size category, this under half a million of cash flow um, of SDE, we have a really hard time getting out of that 2X sort of groove. And so to me, what that would indicate is that all the other people that are buying these sizes of businesses are indicating that this is what they think that they're worth to them. So let's address then the other part of this question, which is the risk part. So I've got some other stuff that I wrote out here. Let me zoom back out. So the question of risk, having a job versus a small business. If you lose your job, you lose 100% of your income. Now, with being an employee, you get access to unemployment benefits. But if you are that 75% quartile person and you're earning 100 grand, uh, in most places, your unemployment benefits are not really much to talk about. You know, uh, when a six figure person ends up on unemployment benefits, that amount of money that comes through the door really doesn't cover much of their overhead, you know, as a household. So really the risk is that if you lose your job, you lose all your income. Whereas if you own a business and you lose a customer, the business should be able to carry on with, of course, the glaring exception of customer concentration problems. So let me tell you a story. Back when I was in the Yellow Pages game, uh, this was back in 1997 is when I, or 90 late, I guess it was 98. I started the yellow pages and I did it for seven years. After a couple of years, we had a reorganization and they decided to categorize the customers. And I was chosen to be the, what they called the new in rep. So, so anyone who established a new business telephone number with the phone company, 
it would be identified and it would come to me. So I would spend my time only dealing with the new business owners. And a lot of these people were, you know, if you can imagine a, a guy who worked at a plumbing company decided I'm going to go out on my own. So he calls the phone company, establishes a business phone number, and then that would then trigger a series of events that would have me calling them up saying, hey, my name is David. I'm going to take care of your first yellow page ad. So I would meet a lot of these people who were making this leap in, in startup mode. And so a lot of them would have this, this belief that being in business for themselves was risky and that they really had to be careful with the money that they had saved up. They had built up a certain runway to help get them to that break even point. So when I sat down with them, you know, they would, a lot of them would, would have this sort of fearful attitude about their business. And I would go through this example that I'm going to give you right now. I would say, look, when you had a job, if you lost your job, you'd lose hundred percent of your income. Now that you're in business, that risk is now spread across the entire base of your client load. So the risk isn't in losing a customer because if, if a successful plumbing company loses one customer, they're going to be able to make it up with the other customers and they'll eventually find a new customer. The real risk is in not getting enough customers fast enough, right? And so the, the reason I would explain this is I would be, a lot of these people would be very, very um, they'd have trepidation with respect to how much money to commit to an advertising campaign. And they'd want to buy like the tiniest little ad. And I would say, and I would have to explain, if you buy a tiny ad, all you're going to do is meet the price shoppers because they're calling everyone in the book. But if you buy a nice big ad, you're going to draw the attention of people who just want their problem solved quickly. And they're going to say, yeah, that person mentioned something or, you know, maybe they, they put in freezing pipes or certain kinds of repairs or, you know, uh, uh, 20 minute toilet replacement or something like that. And so you're going to draw the people who just want their problem solved quickly. And so the risk for these startup plumbers, for example, is not getting enough new customers fast enough. You guys are watching this channel because you're interested in buying a business. So when you buy the business, you get all the customers all at once. You avoid that, that risk. So the real question is, is what is your tolerance for risk? And so if you're afraid that you know, you're going to lose customers and that this is going to lead to your demise, then simply the question would be to create a set of search criteria where you're selling a small amount of goods or services to a very large number of customers. And so you're sort of building a diversified risk portfolio within the framework of the small business, if you want to think about it from an investing point of view, right? So really when I work with buyers, one of the things that we do, especially when they join my coaching program, is we go through an exercise where we identify what's in the background of, of the person, what sort of experience they have, what kinds of roles they've had, and what kinds of industries they've, they've been in. And we look at sort of the strengths that that gives to them. And then we talk about the characteristics of the business they want to buy, which could be geographic. It could relate to the size of the business. It could relate to the type of product or service, whether a business is inventory intensive or not, or capital equipment intensive or not, or IP intensive or not, what have you. And so this attitude about risk would simply relate to customer concentration. There are people that I meet who are not averse at all to customer concentration. They're looking for an opportunity to build really strong relationships with a, str a small number of really great customers that continue to do business year in, year out, right? Someone coming from some sort of relationship management background in sales for example, might say this to me, like, I'm not afraid of having 12 clients represent 60% of my revenue and I can get a chance, you know, get an opportunity to really know those 12 people very well. And so it all depends on what you're looking for. And that's going to determine what kind of business you go and buy. And so, you know, if you're going to go and buy a plumbing business, for example, there's two varieties of plumbing businesses. There's the plumbing contractor who helps new construction and they go and they do all the plumbing in a new apartment building, for example, or a condo. Well, that plumber is going to have very strong relationships with some general contractors or property development companies. And they're going to try to work with those people over and over again. And they're going to have very few large relationships. The other kind of plumbing company is the one that serves homeowners and does repair and, you know, helps with renovations. They're going to have a vast number of clients 
who maybe call them every two and a half or three years, right? And so it just becomes one of the criteria that you put into determining what sort of business you're going to look for. It is not necessarily going to be reflective of the price. I think that you rely on the wisdom of the crowd and every industry is different with respect to pricing. And that's why it's important when you are looking at buying a business that you get access to uh, someone who can help you, who can actually go and look up past transactions or gain information that relates to what other people are paying for the industry that you're looking at. And in particular, the size of business that you're looking at. Because if you're looking at information or data about business pricing and it's not from the right size of businesses, you could mislead yourself in an important way. Anyway, thank you so much for the question. If um, if you want to get into the email list, uh, head over to davidcbarnettlist.com. Uh, I send out something uh, pretty much every day. Um, and you also get notified whenever there's a new video or if I'm going to have a live stream guest on to discuss something, uh, just head to davidcbarnettlist.com. And uh, with that, I'll say thank you very much, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. So how can you learn more about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium-sized businesses? Easy. Go over to my blog site, davidcbarnett.com, where you can learn more about me and how I work with my clients. You can learn more about my books and courses that I've prepared for you. You can find out how to subscribe to my email list, the YouTube playlists, and more. There's literally hundreds of hours of content there, all for free, and I'd love for you to be my guest. Special thanks go to Mark Willis at Lake Growth Financial, today's video sponsor. Mark helps people better manage their personal and business finances through the bank on yourself insurance strategy. This is something I've done personally and I've seen others use it successfully for years. Go to newbankingsolution.com to find all the interviews I've done with Mark and learn more about the advantages of these programs. While there, sign up for a free consultation to learn what this solution might look like for you.